All right, now we're having some fun. What's cracking, everybody, and welcome back to Kraken r, r as the Seattle Kraken get their first win of the season, defeating the Carolina Hurricanes at home 7-4. to four. That's right, seven Kraken goals as they more than triple their goal total on the season. And speaking of being back, man, is it nice to have the real Seattle Kraken back as this definitely looked a lot more like the Kraken we saw last season. Now, it's true that the win does improve the Kraken record to 1-3-1, which is the exact same record the Kraken had through five games in their inaugural season, and that season famously did not go so well. However, on the other hand, last season, which did go pretty well, they started their season 1-2-2 two, and two through five games, which, while it is one more point in the standings, it's still one win and four losses, so... Yeah, the Kraken are right on pace to go right back to the playoffs, just maybe with 99 points this time. Okay, maybe we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves there, but still, there's nothing to worry about yet with this team. Like we said, the shooting percentage was bound to come up at some point, and sure enough, that dam burst wide open in this game against Carolina, with again, the seven goals being more than twice what the Kraken had in their first four games. And yes, of course, in classic Kraken fashion, all seven of those goals came from different players, as 13 members of the team got on the scoring sheet in this one tonight. And as a result, we obviously have a lot to get through in this game, so let's waste no more time and get right into it, with the only difference in the lineup for the Kraken being Decord in net for Grubauer, as finally, after well, two years pretty much of trying to get a tandem going and not really succeeding because of constant staggering injuries. The Kraken are trying to get that tandem going between these two, and so far it seems to be working. And early on in this one, it's a good thing that it's working too, because Carolina right out of the gates gets a couple of very good chances, one of which Decord has to make a pretty nice toe save on, and then has to come up with a follow-up save on a rebound chance. Fortunately, he's able to make both of those, and the Kraken do at least get their wits about them a little bit, although it has to be said that really for the first time this season, at least when it comes to the general flow of play, they got a bit outplayed in this first period. But for whatever reason, that didn't really seem to matter, as just a few minutes into the first period against the flow of play, it's Burkowski with the puck in the offensive zone coming up along the boards, and just before he gets to the blue line, he whips around 180 and fires the puck off on net, and Yanni Gord, with the puck going decently wide of the net, is able to reach with one hand on his stick, out and get the blade on the puck to tip it perfectly into the net and give the Kraken the one to nothing lead for the second game in a row. So this is definitely a goal that comes thanks in part to something that I think the Kraken in general so far through these first five games, even in spite of the outcome, have been doing a much better job of than they did generally speaking last season, and that is getting net front presence. Now it's not always there, it's still a bit of a work in progress, but I do feel like they've gotten a lot of traffic in and around the net, it just hasn't really resulted in pucks bouncing their way up until this one. And finally, Gord gets it to pay off for them with this tip-in as the Kraken were outnumbering the Canes 2-1 to one in front of their net. So obviously we're feeling pretty good at this point about the Kraken having this early one to nothing lead for the second game in a row. Again, especially considering that Carolina had kind of been dominating the flow of play early on. And we got to continue enjoying that lead for about 19 seconds. As the Hurricanes get right into the offensive zone, force a faceoff in the offensive zone, and old demons from last year start to show their heads as the faceoff is won by the Hurricanes and then thrown right on net where Decord does make the save, but the rebound goes right into the crease where Faust is crashing into the net and it goes off his skate right past Decord and in to tie the game up just like that. Especially considering the Kraken had only scored one goal in any given game to that point in the season. Yeah, that really took the wind out of the building just moments after and actually while they're still announcing the Gord goal. Fortunately, at the very least, the Kraken don't allow the Hurricanes to really build much momentum off of this game tying goal and actually end up pushing back against that momentum to kind of even things out right up until the Kraken get a power play, which... Yeah, the tone in my voice pretty much says how that's been going to this point in the season. 
But this is where we get to see the first real payoff of what so far has been a pretty big improvement the Kraken have had this season from last season. And that is, well, the Hurricanes did just score right off of a faceoff they won in the Kraken end, which is something we saw frustratingly frequently last season as the Kraken had a horrible time winning faceoffs, regardless of where it was on the ice. They've actually pretty decisively won the faceoff battle in back to back games coming into this one against the Hurricanes, and by the end of the night, they would make it three straight. And this happens to be one of those as to start the power play, the Kraken win the faceoff back to Vince Dunn. Dunn fires the puck towards the net where Jaden Schwartz has gotten wide open in front of it. And this time, although he had a similar look in the last game against the Avalanche and was not able to score, he is able to make it right through the five hole after a couple of moves and give the Kraken just seconds into the power play, their second power play goal and their first second goal in one game of the season, which is just me clumsily saying the Kraken now have two goals in a game and the two to one lead. Wouldn't you know it? They got that first second goal of a game on the power play. What a world. Plus, with this now being the second power play goal of the season for the Kraken, it now means their power play is back to being even, as they've already given up two shorthanded goals. Either way, the Kraken now have the lead and do manage to survive some more Carolina pressure right up until the Hurricanes get a late power play that's pretty much going to take us to the end of the period. Fortunately, the Kraken penalty kill has been perfect to that point, and they continue to be right up until late in this power play, the Kraken get a two-on-one chance shorthanded going the other way. It's Dunn and Belmar. Dunn fires off the shot looking for a rebound really more than anything else. He gets that rebound. Belmar crashes in and buries it into the side of the net to give the Kraken the three-to-one lead and shorthanded goal as the penalty kill now is a plus one at this point in the season. And Belmar gets his first for the Kraken. And not only that, the Kraken are also able to finish off the last few seconds of this kill to remain perfect on the penalty kill, at least to that point in the season. But they nearly managed to give one back to the Canes anyway in the few seconds there are between the end of this power play and the end of the period, as the Hurricanes still in the offensive zone from the end of that power play get a pass across Decord's face from one side of the crease to the other, and then back into the crease where the shot is taken, but Decord is able to make a spectacular diving splits toe save to keep this one out with four seconds left on the clock, and then comes up with another save off of a rebound chance. And honestly, this entire game, although by the end of it, his save percentage is under... 900 thanks to a shakier third period, although that really didn't have so much to do with him. Decord was incredible in this game, making it now back-to-back -back strong outings for him to start the season. And I would say I think we're feeling pretty comfortable about our 1B option there in net. And if something goes wrong, whether it's injury or a slump for Grubauer, we're set pretty well with the backup here in Decord. Fortunately, Grubauer has also been fantastic in his own right to this point. So it looks like, at least for now, the goaltending shakiness of the last couple of seasons might be fixed. Anyway, thanks to those two fantastic saves by Decord in the final seconds of the first period, we get to the first intermission with the Kraken having a 3-1 to one lead. That's right, they scored as many goals in this first period as they had in the first four games of the season and also managed to do it one on five on five, one on the power play, and one shorthanded. So then we go to the second period where really the only thing the Kraken have to improve on would be maybe a little bit better defense and shot prevention as they did let up nearly 20 shots on goal by the end of that first period. But they get a power play early on, which is going to give them a chance to get a couple shots on goal of their own. And sure enough, the power play picks up pretty much right where it left off. They have a little bit of trouble getting into the offensive end because they don't win the opening faceoff. But once they do get into the offensive end, the puck goes quickly from the blue line down to the faceoff circle, then up to the top of the faceoff circle on the other side where Vince Dunn is waiting wide open. He winds up, fires off a shot, and perfectly top corner, 4-1 to one, Kraken. And Dunn, after getting two assists in the first, gets his first goal of the season and gives the Kraken their second power play goal of this game. And then from there, the rest of the second period is, well, maybe uneventful is the wrong word, as there still were plenty of shots on goal from both sides, so 
Definitely not a showcase of how to play defense necessarily by either team, but there's no more goals and not really any big momentum swings. It's pretty much just up and down the ice the entire period, so it's still kind of fun to watch, but not much happens until the Kraken get another power play at the end of the period, which unfortunately this power play did look a little bit more like what we'd come to get used to at the start of the season so far, where they just kind of had trouble getting anything going and getting into the offensive end, much less get set up to get shots off on goal. Either way, we're not going to complain too much as they did just get back-to-back goals on power plays. So it's hard to ask for a full 180, I guess, in one game from the power play. Even at that, they got pretty close to it outside of this one. Unfortunately, though, as we start the third period where I'll admit, I was kind of feeling like it would be fun to see the Hurricanes score one more time just to get it to 4-2 to two so that they could go empty net with still a two-goal cushion at the end of the game. And with Decord playing net the way he does, you know full well if there's an empty net and he gets the puck on his stick with a little bit of space, he is going to take a shot for that goalie goal, which is basically what I was hoping for at that point. The Hurricanes, well... They made it a little bit too interesting too quickly as almost immediately in this third period after the final seconds of what was left of the Kraken power play ticks off the clock without anybody noticing. The Hurricanes get down into the Kraken end of the ice and a couple passes later, Decord really is given no chance on this one as it goes from right down next to the net, right up into the slot and immediately shot by Jarvis into the net before Decord has any chance to get back and it's 4-2 Hurricanes, which is obviously not ideal, but it still is a two-goal lead for the Kraken in the third period, and while if the Hurricanes were going to score again, it would have been nice if they could have done it later on, as this early in the period is a little bit too early for comfort, and it becomes obvious why just a couple minutes later. As the Hurricanes get back into the offensive end, the puck is behind the net on the stick of one of the Hurricanes players, and it's just It's kind of an unfortunate play for Decord. He's trying to look over his shoulder while keeping his shoulder on the post at the play behind him. And right as he thinks that the puck is going to go to the other side of the net and he's going to have to make that transition. So he looks from one shoulder over to the other shoulder. Right as he turns around, that's when the puck comes out from behind the net to the spot that he looked away from. And immediately it's it's just a really nice shot from Kaki Niemi right into the newly vacated top corner of the net over Decord's shoulder, right where his mask had just been, and it's now 4-3, to with still the majority of the third period remaining. Thankfully, though, the Kraken are able to stop the bleeding there, and actually, shortly after this third goal goes in for the Hurricanes, they're able to turn momentum in their favor really lastingly for the first time in this game. And after the game, Haxtell even said that in hindsight considering the outcome he was almost glad that those two goals went in because it gave the chance to the gave the team a chance to battle back from some adversity after blowing a lead and they're able to do just that as that momentum turns into the fifth goal of the game pretty quickly as at the other end of the ice Bjorkstrand has the puck now behind the Hurricanes net in a similar fashion to what had just happened in the Kraken end and he's actually got Wemberg in a similar spot to where Kakaniemi just scored from But instead, he does take it to the other side of the net where he's got McCann crashing in. He finds McCann. McCann is able to get a pretty nice shot off to the opposite top corner while Burns is putting his stick in front of the shot. So it turns out to be a lot harder shot than it looked like it was real time. Either way, he gets off the perfect shot into the top corner and the Kraken take back the two goal lead now five to three. And McCann gets his second of the season after being robbed on a couple of occasions by either a post or an incredible save in the last couple of games. And then for the second time already in the game, within 30 seconds of the Kraken scoring, there's another goal. But this time it's another Kraken goal, as on what was going to be, well, I guess it was technically a delayed penalty call with Borgen getting interfered with in the neutral zone. The Kraken get to the offensive end, Everly gets it to Beneers, and Beneers shoots it right out into the slot. A beautiful dish for a crashing Cartier. Cartier puts a stick on the ice and ramps that puck right off it and into the net to give the Kraken the 6-3 lead. And that should just about do it here late in the third, as Cartier gets his first official NHL goal as far as regular season is concerned, and that's where everyone looks when it comes to stats and all that, so 
I guess Cartier's chase for Gretzky starts now. I mean, they're already doing a Bedard chase on Gretzky, so why not? I'm sorry, my apologies. Actually, it turns out that Everly might not have actually touched the puck as Borgen gets the secondary assist there. So either way, the nice part of this play is that pass from Beneers, the Calder winner of 2023, to the AHL Rookie of the Year winner in 2023 in Cartier with that first NHL goal. And who knows, maybe he'll be the Rookie of the Year in 2024 and this will be Calder to Calder. Probably not. I mean, Bedard definitely has the inside track there, but... Why not? It's still early. We can dream. Of course, it is probably worth mentioning here on a bit of a down note that the reason Cartier was playing here with Beneers and Eberle and really did pretty much throughout the entire third period is that Schwartz ended up taking a hard block shot in the second. And while he did do one shift in the third, he ended up going down the hallway and never returned. So hopefully Schwartz is OK because the Kraken have already lost one forward for over a month in Tanev, who's not going to be back for four to six weeks. So yeah, Schwartz is not a guy they want to lose. Either way, McCann was taking Schwartz's spot and Cartier was doing double duty with the fourth line and this line with Beniers and Everly. Anyway, back to the game at hand. Everything at this point should be pretty much fine and taken care of from a Kraken perspective with now a retaken three goal lead six to three here late in the third. And sure enough, everything turns out to be fine for them unless your name's Jared McCann, who does shortly after this sixth goal goes in, take a pretty nasty hit in open ice away from the puck in the crack and end. And to be clear with this one, I don't think it was a dirty hit, even in spite of the reputation of the guy who made the hit. It seems like it's just an unfortunate collision as McCann is down on the ice, kind of on his hands and knees after falling with the play going past him. And Lemieux, ends up running into him as he's looking at the play that's moved on instead of where he's going. Either way, he hits McCann pretty hard and McCann was slow to get up, but he did stay on the bench and continued to play the rest of the game. So it seems like he's going to be fine. He seemed fine in the post game presser. So yeah, hopefully everything's there. Just didn't feel great in the moment. I'm sure Lemieux goes to the box. The Kraken don't really do much with the power play. And then This will definitely make people quite happy and make even more Cartier fans than there already were in Seattle as immediately out of the box before Lemieux can get to the bench after the power play is over. Cartier goes right after him and you gotta, you gotta love the bravery. I mean, I don't know if Cartier just didn't know the reputation of Lemieux. He probably didn't know the biting part because you gotta be careful with that. The, the dude has a history of biting people, especially the last name Kachuk. Fortunately, Cartier is not of the Kachuk family. I don't think he got bitten, but he, yeah, he didn't win the fight. Either way, good to see him stick up for McCann, and I'm sure, again, earn some more fans there. Unfortunately, him going after Lemieux did get him an extra roughing call on top of the traded fightings, so the Hurricanes do get a power play, and the bummer here is that they do end up scoring on it. It's Seth Jarvis on another broken play. The puck ends up out in front of the net off of a rebound and Decord doesn't have a chance to get back to try and say, make a second save after making the first save rebounding out there. Anyway, they score on the power play. It ruins the perfect season to this point for the Kraken penalty kill. But I suppose with the shorthanded goal, they're still even on the season. Not long after that, the Kraken hit the empty net. It's Bjorkstrand that does that. And so we get to that 7-4 to four final score with seven different goal scorers. So obviously for the Kraken, this is exactly the game that the doctor ordered as they do get that monkey off their back of the horrendous luck that they are getting shooting percentage wise in those first four games. Now, obviously it's just one game, so hopefully it can continue that way, but they continue to get good offense and a lot of shots on goal, which had been the case to this point. Another 36 shots on goal there. They just were able to finally get a good number of them to go. Now, at the other end of things, they also gave up 36 shots on goal, so maybe could do a little bit better in their end of the ice when it comes to shot suppression. But at the same time, the Hurricanes are a good team, so you're not going to be limiting people and suffocating them defensively every game of the season. And they also did do better as the game went along. I think it was 18 shots in the first period, then 12, I want to say, in the second, and just six in the third, so... Pretty good decline in offensive production 
shots on goal wise from the Hurricanes, a couple of unfortunate rebounds and a little bit more sloppy around the net from the Kraken in the third, which is what led to the three goals versus just one in the first two periods. Unfortunately, that does kind of ruin Decord's numbers on the night where he had a fantastic night and a much better night than his end of the night numbers would suggest. And also real quick, I'm going to squeeze in here that, like I said earlier, this is now the third game in a row that the Kraken have won the faceoff percentage duel pretty handily. So that's also a good sign. That's not something the Kraken did a lot last season and certainly not in consecutive games. So good news there, hopefully going forward. But speaking of Decord, he is likely to be a part of this next segment, which is, of course, our Kraken Three Stars. It is now brought to you by the Patreon members of this channel. If you want to help support the channel a little bit more than you already are by just watching this video to this point or having hit the like or subscribe buttons, then there is a link to the Patreon down below in the description. And by being a Patreon member, you too get to help decide who the three stars are after each and every one of the Kraken games or even if there are three stars after some of the not so great games like the first four of this season. Either way, so far, a big shout out to our first two members, the first member who's been around since pretty much I started the Patreon, Nancy J, as well as new member Mary Kuzma, who helped decide the three stars of this game, both of them selecting Vince Dunn, who I agree is easily the first star of this one, two assists and a goal on the night for Dunn, and really had had a pretty fantastic game so it was good to see him actually he's played pretty well for the most part this season with a couple of gaffes here and there but it was good to see him get rewarded with the second star in this one i'm gonna go with ty cartier obviously getting his first nhl regular season goal him being one of the few players who started his nhl career in the playoffs and got a goal out of it but the first one that'll show up on all of his career stats at the end as well as getting his first NHL fight, playoffs or otherwise, coming to the defense of McCann after that big hit. And honestly, even outside of those two things, he was all over the ice. He played a pretty big role there, stepping in with the Schwartz injury and taking more of a role double shifting on that first line as well as the fourth line. So a great game from the rookie. And then the third star, I'm going to go with Joey Decord as I kind of foreshadowed coming into this. But Decord had an incredible game, really a truly incredible first two periods. The third period might have gotten away from him a little bit. But again, I think a lot of that was some sloppiness in front of him around the net once the Kraken got to a pretty healthy lead. Either way, a great game from Decord and those two other guys. Really a great game from a lot of Kraken players. This is definitely one where there could have been any number of guys that were mentioned. Some others mentioned on the Patreon would be Alex Wenberg, who also managed to get an assist in this game. And on top of that, well, this turnaround the Kraken have had in these last three games when it comes to winning faceoffs could clearly be traced back to Pierre Edward Belmar, who is known for winning faceoffs, and the Kraken weren't good at it last season. And then they add him, and now they seem to be. Wemberg was the one who really stood out in this game, winning 10 of the 14 faceoffs that he took. So even if Belmar is the one that's teaching everybody, well, Wemberg was the one that did the best in the faceoff circle in this game. Also definitely worth mentioning would be Yanni Gord, who got the Kraken on the board first and continues to be Yanni Gord. I mean, he's almost always worth mentioning when it comes to how the Kraken end up winning games. There's also, yeah, Belmar I already talked about. Yamamoto was pretty good. Pretty much any number of players, Beniers gets on, gets his first point of the season. So yeah, a lot of good things coming out of this game. And hopefully the Kraken can carry that into another strong East Coast opponent in the Rangers who come into town on Saturday. With that though, as always, I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below, who your three stars would be, and just in general, what you thought of this first win for the Kraken and the dam finally bursting on goals going in for this team. Otherwise, if you've made it to this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like and enjoy this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below to help support the channel for free. And if you would like to support the channel a little bit more and, like I said, be a part of the Kraken three stars as well as some other things, there's a link to that Patreon down below. Until next time, for hopefully a second win in a row against another good opponent, stay safe out there, be good to each other, God bless, and go Kraken!